in the era of electric vehicles. Cobalt is the new oil. This mineral, cobalt, which apparently had zero use before the 2000s, is now the key component in manufacturing lithium-ion batteries, which are used by smartphones and electric cars. The demand for cobalt is increasing as more electric cars are sold, particularly in Europe, because the European governments are encouraging the sales as they have generous environmental bonuses. Recent projections by the World Economic Forum's Global Battery Alliance show that the demand for cobalt for use in batteries will grow fourfold by 2030 as a result of this electric vehicle boom. Cobalt is found basically all across the world from North America to Southeast Asia and Australia. So why is the Democratic Republic of Congo the center of attention when it comes to this mineral? Well, that's probably because the DRC has the largest deposits of cobalt in the world. It is estimated that 70% of all the cobalt in the entire world is found in the DRC. This is equivalent to 3.5 million metric tons of cobalt, a behemoth amount of cobalt. The Democratic Republic of Congo, or the DRC, is a Central African country. It is Africa's second largest country by area, after Algeria, and the world's 11th largest. The Democratic Republic of the Congo is the world's most populous officially francophone country, with a population of roughly 92 million people. Copper has been mined in the DRCs since at least the 4th century, and Portuguese slave traffickers were aware of the riches as early as the 16th century. Copper production produces cobalt as a byproduct. According to King Leopold's Ghost, a 1995 novel by Adam Hochschild, Belgium's King Leopold Prawn II claimed the land as his own property in 1885 and violently exploited it for rubber. As many as 10 million Congolese were slain. However, due to local opposition and the region's inaccessibility, large-scale commercial mining did not commence in the south until the 20th century. Kawazi was founded in 1937 by the Union Minier du Hout Katanga, a Belgian royal decree created mining monopoly. These colonialists may not have committed the same horrors as King Leopold, but they nevertheless exploited the country extensively. They realized that building infrastructure was the most efficient method to harvest the DRC's mineral resources rapidly. The business cleared the thorny acacias and miambo trees that had grown atop Kalwazi's rich mineral deposits and developed the town over the area's undulating hills, with broad streets and bungalows for Europeans who lived in separate neighborhoods from Congolese employees. Locals helped build the infrastructure and worked in the mines, but the whites managed everything, as Hitzman described it. Before we get into the truly dark side of this country, Please take a second to hit that like button as it enables our content reach a wider audience. Okay, so where were we? Yes, so this Central African Francophone nation, the DRC, is the site of the world's largest deposits of cobalt, a key component in electric car batteries. Normally you'd expect Congo to be one of the wealthiest countries in Africa or even the world, and you'd be right to think so, but unfortunately, more than 73% of Congolese live under $2 a day. This has been further worsened by the sheer amount of child labor involved. Human rights violations, such as the use of child labor, abound in the DRC's cobalt mining industry. According to Amnesty International, an estimated 40,000 miners are involved in artisanal mining in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Accidents sometimes occur as a result of a lack of sufficient safety procedures. Miners are also frequently exploited by opportunistic, abusive, and predatory mining companies, earning pitiful salaries. These circumstances have resulted in soaring living costs in the DRC and its devastated terrain, leaving people anxious to seize any opportunity to survive. Working in the mining industry in the DRC has more financial promise than other industries, where imports dominate because the country lies on top of a vast cobalt reserve that analysts believe stores more than 15% of the world's cobalt supply. Because there is no industry control, exploitative tactics can continue, but it also poses a public health risk. Miners of all ages are exposed to dust and particles, which can cause lung and skin ailments such as tuberculosis and dermatitis if they do not wear the correct safety equipment. The bulk of the DRC mining activities is carried out by China. 
Chinese investors such as China Molybdenum, Tank Fugiru Mining SA, and Minerals and Metals Group are particularly powerful in the DRC's copper and cobalt-rich Hout Katanga and Lualaba districts of Old Katanga Province. These companies own 15 of the 17 cobalt mines in the DRC, the five largest Chinese mining corporations with cobalt and copper holdings in the country have access to a total of $124 billion in credit lines from Chinese state banks. Artisanal and small-scale mining, or ASM, produces 15 to 30 percent of the DRC's cobalt. Human rights organizations have recorded serious human rights violations in mining activities for years. These threats to human rights are especially severe in artisanal mines in the Democratic Republic of Congo, a country devastated by brutal ethnic warfare, Ebola, and high levels of corruption. Child labor, deadly accidents, and violent skirmishes between artisanal miners and huge mining company security officers are all too common. However, mining cannot simply be turned off. For millions of Congolese living in abject poverty, it is a lifeline. Because of the intertwined nature of the cobalt supply chain, removing artisanal and small-scale mining from it is neither practical nor desirable from a development standpoint. Instead, companies committed to responsible cobalt sourcing must take responsibility for tackling the human rights crimes that plague the DRC's artisanal and small-scale mining industry. Some businesses have begun to test so-called ASM formalization programs, which govern mining methods and working conditions. On September 2019, I looked at the two main current cobalt ASM formalization initiatives in the DRC, one led by the Swiss-based commodities trading business, Trafigura, and the other by Huiyu Cobalt, the largest Chinese cobalt processing firm. Several other formalization projects are in the development stages right now. A World Economic Forum white paper has published lessons learned from these programs and recommendations for businesses. Above all, corporations must collaborate with key stakeholders to establish a single ASM standard for mine safety and child labor, as well as assure that a .SM cobalt is ethically supplied. ASM formalization means different things to different firms, and there is no universal standard or uniformity in how it is implemented. The market's acceptance of a .SM cobalt is hampered by a lack of consensus on what constitutes responsible ASM. Because of human rights concerns, many multinational corporations are currently boycotting the DRC. Many other firms that make electronics or electric vehicles don't use cobalt from ASM sites, at least not publicly, despite the practical challenges of separating ASM cobalt from industrial production by tracking it at these mines. The mining sector has to standardize its approach to these small mining sites to boost customer confidence that cobalt from the DRC is not mined by children or in hazardous conditions. This necessitates acknowledging that mining will continue, that industry human rights standards will be required, and that those on the ground will be required to oversee compliance with those standards. The DRC government has passed a mining code and has begun allocating territory for a .SM. However, commercial firms will be required to help fully deploy ASM formalization at scale. These are hugely difficult tasks, but we can learn from existing ASM formalization pilot initiatives and scale up these models while simultaneously addressing the core causes of systemic human rights issues in the DRC, such as child labor. Several major corporations are beginning to embrace common ASM formalization standards. Working with key actors along the supply chain, including the government, cooperatives and concession holders, civil society organizations, workers, and manufacturing and end-user companies in a multi-stakeholder setting, both globally and in the DRC, will be critical to developing systems that promote responsible cobalt production and trade practices. The rising global need for battery materials gives a once-in-a-lifetime chance to create a responsible mining cobalt business. Companies that utilize lithium-ion batteries have promised to clean up their supply chains and innovate their way out of the problem in response to public outrage about the circumstances in cobalt mines on several occasions. There's also a financial incentive. Cobalt is one of the most expensive materials in a battery. Tesla announced last year that some of its electric cars would employ lithium-ion phosphate batteries, which do not include cobalt. Huey's shares dropped dramatically. 
According to Reuters, it was not apparent to what extent Tesla wants to use lithium-ion phosphate batteries, and the business had no plans to discontinue utilizing cobalt-containing batteries. Lithium-ion phosphate batteries aren't used in cell phones since they'd have to be doubled up to obtain the needed voltage, which would add unwanted bulk and mass. In 2016, Apple issued a statement following the publication of an Amnesty International study on unethical cobalt mining, stating that it believes every person in their supply chain has a right to safe, ethical working conditions, and that underage labor is never permitted. After an investigation by Sky News, it was revealed that cobalt mined by children was still being used in Apple's gadgets the following year. Apple temporarily halted imports of hand-mined cobalt, but the practice resumed as the media attention died down. Apple's supply chain still includes Hueyu's cobalt. Attorneys from the Washington, D.C.-based International Rights Advocates sued Apple, Google, Dell, Microsoft, and Tesla on December 2019 for their roles in the injuries and deaths of child minors. The complaint claims that these lads are working under Stone Age circumstances for pitiful remuneration and at great personal risk to provide cobalt. The defendant's annual revenues of hundreds of billions of dollars would not be achievable without cobalt mined in the Congo. The benefits of the cobalt model might be applied to the estimated 40 million artisanal miners who labor for a living extracting other minerals around the world. Before the electric vehicle boom truly takes off, solutions must be put in place. Now is the moment to act. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel and officially become a member of our family of touristers here on The New Tourist. Thanks for watching and see you in another one.